Hello, right, what are we doing here looking at an old Macintosh? Okay, so this is a fairly stock, as you can see, Macintosh. It's a 9500, it's a 180, so it has 180 megahertz power PC processors. There are 604 E's, and it's marked MP because it's a multi-processor machine, so it has two, and these came stock from the factory. So nothing signed about the keyboard, just standard Apple design style keyboard. Mouse, absolutely bog standard, round mouse. So we'll hit the power button to get the standard chime. This Macintosh is slightly sick, ill, um, unhappy with itself these days and sometimes when it boots a large SCSI drive, which is actually a SCAR drive with a connect conversion adapter to let it run as a standard SCSI drive decides it's not going to available and crashes and stops working that large kind of burp verbal sound was the drive saying it was ready um, and now we're going to hit this now this is the B boot logo this is the B3D logo not a lot of people will have seen this because it was exclusive to the PC, PC platform. So you would need to have a B-Box or you would need to have a Mac. And the logo would appear basically as the machine booted after the power and self test for the B-Box. Um, the B-Box has the two sets of flashing lights up the side of the, um, the wings. And the power and self test would light those up in turn um, once for each of the sticks of RAM in the machine. Very, very slowly, the larger the RAM, the longer it took. After that post, it would then immediately show that logo and then boot into the desktop within a few seconds after that. Um, the Mac obviously hits the Mac OS and you have to go through that horrible <laughs> looking um, bootloader where you have to select between standard boot to Mac OS and the B um, boot. Right, so I thought I'd show you the boot menu. The boot menu is very, very basic. This is the boot menu, menu that we will find on all versions of the PowerPC. So basically, all you can do is select a boot volume. Um, it. I think um, some of the developer releases had more options because you could re-index the old cell file system but for this version of BIOS this is it. So we're going to boot from the low key. Oh, you can also see they never updated the version of the bootloader past 4.5 for PowerPC. I don't know why. They just never did. So this is now going to boot into the desktop. It's going to boot into standard tracker. It's got my customizations and my custom startup sound. But other than that, it is yeah, your box standard revision five. So you can see box standard tracker. We've got. Um, Process controller. I forget what this is called, but it tells you how much room there is on every drive. Um, can change between the virtual desktops. Not very exciting. Doesn't actually do very much visually. The old mail. Launch pad is this thing over here. It's just a, kind of a dock launcher type thing. Because um, I used to use this with a modem, it's still got dark networking. It's going to be standard media. Unfortunately, because the Mac has only got one mouse button, you have to press a keyboard shortcut to actually get it to do the right click. I've only got one hand, so I'm not doing that at the moment. Yep, so, box standard. Um, well, of course, there is no box standard, but really box standard. All the apps that you would expect to see. So you've got things like the clock. That's what we got. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Sorry, the mouse is a bit dodgy. 
Um, the media player, magnifier, expander. I mean, other than the apps that I've installed, custom such as Gobi Productive, it's all pretty much identical. Um, oh, calculator, I think, comes from one of the preview releases. I don't think that was included in any of the later revision files. And obviously, the mouse will actually be Load up Pulse, and you can see. Two processors, 604E, 180 megahertz, nothing surprising there. Okay, of course, do the fun thing of uh, turning your processor off, turning it back on, etc. Turning your processor off, turning it back on. That actually physically does turn the processor off, so it's probably not a particularly sensible thing to do. Right, so the point of this video is if you go to preferences the preferences as you can see are almost identical to the preferences that you'll be used to if you ever use revision 5 I mean I've got spiced keys installed and possibly another no everything else looks fairly stock apart from one which is boot Boot basically does a very similar thing to what the Macintosh boot menu does. And as you can see, it just allows you to select a boot volume. So, like the volume will be selected to boot because it's the revision 5. Um, Mau is another revision 5, but it's a bit more cut down. And it's also on the other, another drive. This is the drive with the issue. And Aloha is another version. Be nice that we're going to look at in a second, which is currently the default, which is why I had to hit the menu to change which drive it was going to be from. Oh, yeah, the other thing we'll see is look, see, standard BOS um, yellow tabs. Uh, this has got a version of Open Tracker on it, so you've got all the standard Open Tracker type things that you would have expected to see. A standard layout, you've got the close button, tab yellow, you've got the zoom button. If I was to hold down, oh shift, try to do this with my elbow, you can actually move the tab. It's one of the cool features of BOS. If you move the tab, um, you have multiple windows on top of each other but with the tabs moved, so that you can kind of stack them and still be able to see the tabs and sort of move between them fairly easily. Alive. Line those up slightly badly. Anyway, now we're going to restart. Hoping that the drive plays ball because it has a habit of not playing ball. As I didn't do this from a cold boot, I was lucky. That's it, we can just press for tags, we have the white, hit the 3D logo. As I said, this is PowerPC exclusive. So, first off, you'll notice that Tracker doesn't look quite right. Tracker has got rounded corners. Now, anyone who's actually used BOS for any amount of time and used some of the slightly less legal versions of BOS, the versions that were provided by sources outside of the norm, will know that rounded edges means Dano. And again, if you look at the style of the actual menu, that does not look like the Revision 5 version of the menu. If you look at the way it highlights, that again looks like the Dano style. If we come down to the applications and we move across, you'll notice that it actually does the snake, which was a feature which I believe they added to Dano. I'm not sure whether you could get the Revision 5 to do it, maybe you could. Certainly Dano was the first time I ever saw the snake. But other than that you can see that the apps that are installed are pretty much stock. Including Net Positive, which again is completely useless. Which leads us on to the second difference that you'll notice. The tab. These tabs are not movable. Mm, pretty much work in a similar way to the tabs that do in Dano. Um, 
Let's see, is there a bounty? Yeah, there's an about. I'm not actually sure what version of that positive this is. Apparently it's 2.2 D8. So what you'll find with this version of the operating system is that there's some incredibly strange inconsistencies. Some of what you see is very new, and some of it is just old. So... Again, it's using Open Tracker. This version of Open Tracker is not a stock Open Tracker that's being taken from Beavitz or similar. <coughs> it's actually a version of Open Tracker that's been specifically compiled for this. The way we know this is because of the fact that this version of BOS does not have the About box built into the kernel. So basically, if I go to the B menu and do About BOS. This is not your standard BIOS build. Um, so, let's have a look at some more things. Probably the easiest way to do this, I worked this out earlier, is if we go to network. Now, this is where you start seeing things that make you think. Wait a minute, this isn't just a skin, someone hasn't hacked this, this is actually really working in the way it should. Um, the buttons don't look like BS buttons, they look like Dano buttons. All of the controls have got the Dano look, so the tick box has got the same animation. The way the radio buttons work is the same. The button with focus has got the blue bumpers on it. So yeah, all in all, something's not quite right. Well, thank you for watching and I uh, hope it's been interesting.